What's up all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at the Avengers The Gathering Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So let's do this. Now before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and all the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus is due out in the direct market on March 17th. Hey. It's the week of my birthday. All right, what a way to celebrate. But it might be delayed though, because we've already had a couple of delays. So keep that in mind. We've had some really bad weather on this side of the coast of the United States. So Diamond has been affected as well as several retailers. So keep that in mind. And then a couple of weeks later, it will be out in the book market. Now, what we're looking at here on the right-hand side is the direct market cover. So this is actually from a poster, if I'm not mistaken. And then we have this awesome picture of Dane and Cersei. Now, on the left-hand side, that is your standard edition cover. And that is a picture of Cersei and the rest of the Avengers from issue 366, but the cover was actually this gold embossed cover that came out. It's in the pages of this omnibus and I'll show it to you. But this is the colored version. And then of course the spine even looks different. So that's something that Marvel has been doing, making the spines look different on the direct market cover. You have Cersei and Dane, the Black Knight, and then on the standard edition cover, you have Cersei, Hercules, Black Widow, Black Knight, and Crystal. So that, that's something that Marvel has been doing for the last few releases. So when I do these omnibus reviews, I'll try to get a hold of the dust jacket so everybody can see the differences in the art. Uh, both of them are, of course, supplied by Steve Epting. However, this one here is a painted uh, finish to it. Let's look at this book. Looking at the spine right there. This is a pretty big book. We're looking at 1152 pages. And of course, from this angle, because I know some people like seeing this angle of the book right there. And the back of the book, which showcases all of the covers. Well, most of the covers are collected in here. So this is the Avengers meeting their match. How many times have they done that? Now, the most important thing is where does this fit into... Well, I say the most important thing, but one of the most important things is where does this fit into the reading order of the Avengers? Well, it slides right here. That's right. You all are going to have to go look for the crossing omnibus. I told you it was necessary. I'll talk about what it's included in here when we look inside the book. But under the dust jacket, we have this new sky blue design. And it reminds me of the box set that I did an overview of that came out in 2019, I think. But that's the color that's in here. I've never seen that inside of an Avengers omnibus. Most of them are black or they have the art on the board. But this is the color that they're going with. I kind of, I dig that actually. So let's get this opened. Let's look inside. So let's get this opened. We have the same sky blue color bookend pages. Avengers The Gathering. So they're really focusing on Cersei. Maybe because she's an Eternal. Maybe because she's going to be in one of those Eternal movies. One of those movies. The movie. Sorry. I'm not uh, giving away any rumors. I really don't know if there's going to be more than one. We have the writing talents of Bob Harris, Len Kaminsky, Glenn Hurling, just to name a few. I remember Roy Thomas writing some of the issues. Of course, you have Fabian Nicesi and Scott Lobdell and Ben Rabb when they have a crossover. Uh, here's all the artists that helped out with the inkers and the pencils, but mainly it is Steve Epting and Tom Palmer. And then Tom Palmer actually supplies, that's right, the colors. Bill Oakley, the main letterer. Here is your table of contents, what is collected in here. And we'll talk about the missing issues and where you can find them. But here we go. We kick it off with Avengers 343. So let's talk about the contents first. This collects Avengers 343 and 344, as well as Avengers 348 through 375, annual number 22, the strike file number one, X-Men, adjectiveless X-Men 26, Avengers West Coast 101, Uncanny X-Men 307, Black Knight Exodus, hell yes, number one, and Avengers Anniversary Magazine issue number one. Now, where are the missing issues? Where are Avengers 345 through 347? Those can be found in the Operation Galactic Storm Epic Collection or the two trade paperbacks that came out a while back. That's where you can find those particular issues. Hopefully one day we'll get an oversized hardcover because I really enjoy that story and I think it belongs in oversized format. So that crosses over with Thor, it crosses over with Wonder Man, it crosses over with Avengers West Coast, Iron Man, Captain America, 
and that's why it's not included in here. So what is this about? What is this era of Avengers? Well, like I mentioned, this takes place before the crossing, but if you have the epic collections, then this takes place after the collection obsession. Uh, that's the epic collection that came out. And then, honestly, some of the content can be found here in Fear the Reaper. This, these are epic collections in case you get epic collections and the gatherers strike however the gatherers strike also contains the terminatrix objective and that is something that was left out of this omnibus so in case you're thinking about getting rid of this if you're like me you gotta hold on to it for those four issues and then the annual number 21 with the crossover with Thor and Captain America annuals and Fantastic Four can be found in here because it's not collected in here. I say if they ever do an omnibus between this and the omnibus of The Crossing, then we'll probably have those four issues of the Terminatrix objective that are collected in that epic collection. And if we ever get an omnibus before this one, then we will probably get those annuals. Um, but this is a new era of the avengers so this is a new era for the avengers and yes this is all steve epting right here his artwork looks a lot different than what you're probably used to if you've seen him in modern time or when he started out with his new style in the pages of captain america by ed brubaker it's a little bit different it's not just the color and of course that's also because of the inks by tom palmer so this is the after the operation galactic storm crossover and this is kirk Jar uh, jarvin Jarvanin, uh, I believe it's what is it? Here, let's go back. I'm pretty sure. Kirk Jar Jarvanin. Yes, that's what I thought. I remember him drawing the Marvel uh, trading cards. That's why his artwork stands out and looks familiar. So let's keep going. We are introduced to a new villain named Proctor and Magdalene that showed up with the Swordsman. So it's the reintroduction of the Swordsman. And we are now moving Crystal into the Avengers Mansion because of the events that happened recently. Um, we have Hercules on the team. We have Captain America actually stepping away from the Avengers and Black Widow becoming the Avengers leader. We have Eric Masterson as Thor. And this is just an issue where uh, some of Hercules' buddies are messing with Thor's head. So that's why they're fighting. Uh, but this is your main lineup of Avengers. You have the Vision, you have Black Widow, you've got Crystal, Black Knight, Cersei, and Thor in the back. And then this is the issue where Professor Xavier comes and warns Crystal. She is Pietro, Quicksilver's wife, and they have a kid together. And of course, that kid is the granddaughter of Magneto, who during this time is believed to be dead. I think... That's as far as I'll say, because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But that kind of sets up some of these events here. The Operation Galactic Storm is important to read as well, because some of the things that happen with the Black Knight and why the Kree is coming after them, and then the ending of this particular issue has to do with what he did in the pages of Operation Galactic Storm. But I love this era. So I told you about the characters and, you know, they're coming and moving into the Avengers man Mansion with Jarvis and Marilla, who is the inhuman kind of like nanny of Crystal. Yeah, this lady right here. So the Avengers are changing the lineup like they always do. It's no different than any other time. I mean, they've been doing that for decades. But I really enjoy this timeline. I mean, they, they all got silly 90s leather jackets, but they were awesome. I don't care. They were great. Um, you know, Bob Harris was writing it, and then Bob Harris eventually became editor-in-chief at Marvel. So he kind of stepped away from writing the books. But most of this stuff here during this era is written by him with a few fill-in writers, few fill-in artists. Yeah, some of the artwork fill-in artists are, uh, it's it's pretty rough. But then you have like MC Wyman. I love his stuff in Transformers. You have uh, Lynn Kaminsky. This is um, the Reaper storyline where the Reaper makes a deal with somebody to become more powerful and takes on the Avengers. You know, this is what the Grim Reaper turned into. Black Knight, that's another thing I forgot about. The Black Knight gave up his ebony sword for this photon, like, lightsaber. So, yes, this is what the Reaper does. He brings back some villains from the past to take on the Avengers. What is this? The Legion of the Unliving. Not the first time we've had the Avengers confront them like that. But back to what I was talking about with these new characters that were introduced towards the beginning. It's this new group of villains that show up with the Swordsman. Yes, so here you have Proctor. 
He's the main bad guy, and he has a secret that may have ties to the Avengers. Uh, there's the Swordsman, there's Sloth, Magdalene, and what is her name? Lady Cassandra, I think. There's another uh, team member, but I'm not going to give it away. So they are going through different universes, and they're trying to capture the uh, counterparts of their world's version of that person. So it all starts with the Cole uh, Tiger, who is Black Panther here in our world. So they're trying to kill our Black Panther to give the Cole Tiger his life. And they do the same thing with... Um, a couple of the characters here in the Avengers, but I'll let you find out how that happens. And, oh yes, forgot Archon comes back. Oh, this is a big turning point for one of the Avengers. One of the Avengers is forced to kill a character. That one's pretty, that's a pretty rough storyline. You have the Return of the Eternals here. This is where Icarus comes in with Sprite and Ajax to come and take Cersei because she's an Eternal. But... Her and Dane are kind of form this beautiful bond together, even though Dane, the Black Knight, has feelings for Crystal, who is married to Quicksilver, but Quicksilver's been rejecting her because he's now with X Factor and they have marital issues, and I don't care what anybody says. Yes, it's over dramatic, it's over the top, it's like a big soap opera, but I loved it. I love this era. The vision is gonna go through some changes. Here, like his body is going to go back to this and that all has to do with Proctor and his uh, folk and I'll let you find out about that we get the first appearance of death cry just kind of shows up out of nowhere she's one of the she are and she's like hey I'm gonna join you guys and what is this dude's name blood wraith I think he was from the annuals and let's just flip through here a little bit more the vision that's a good issue too because the vision right during this time is going through some complexity of his own uh scarlet witch is with the west coast avengers and he's with the avengers and he's having a identity crisis if you will and then this all leads up to this crossover with the x-men as i mentioned in that one issue what was that 360 professor xavier comes in and warns the avengers that hey some of Magneto's people are crazy. They're known as the Acolytes, and they may try to come and kidnap Crystal, your daughter. Uh, I'm sorry, Luna, your daughter. And Crystal's like, no, not my kid. I look, she's right here. And then, oh, no, it's not. Bam. That's not your kid. Anyway, those are the sound effects I would use as a teenager, and I'm still using them to this day. So that's what kicks this off. Where is Luna? Where is their daughter? Well, let's get the X-Men involved, because they know more about Genosha. They know more about the Acolytes, and they know who could be behind the kidnapping and why they would kidnap Luna, to what extent. So I will let you read that to find out, but one of my biggest one of the most important things that they added and then there's the aftermath and other stories back here uh, but one of the most important things that they added that for the first time we're gonna get so much drama during these issues okay but the coolest thing yes that they collected that's never been collected in oversized format before is the black knight exodus one shot so during this big crossover with the x-men uh, black knight kind of knows who exodus is so that whole storyline is explained in this one shot and this is all written by ben rab and of course the artwork i'm sure you may be familiar with of course his art styles changed a little bit but i loved it even from the beginning when he was doing iron man and these pages uh before he went over to cross gen and that is jimmy chung and you know that guy i don't think i need any further explanation as to who he is he's kind of blown up but he supplied the artwork for this one shot this one shot has not been collected like i mentioned in oversized format but if you have the trade paper or i'm sorry the marvel premiere hardcover called blood ties which is what the crossover is known as this is collected in there but those are standard size um artwork so that's one of the things that I love that, that they added in here. Let's look in the back here for some extras. Okay, so here we have some extras. We have the Deluxe Edition cover here from Avengers 375. It's an anniversary issue. I want to say that one's 48 pages. And we have some Marvel Age stuff. One of the things that I try to stay away from when I do overviews of books is I try not to put in too much of my opinion in a book. Kind of let the book uh, speak for itself. But I think for books like this or New Warriors, there's this whole like just for some reason misconception that the 90s had just nothing but crap stories right like i i get it i get the hate for the crossing i i understand it i love it but it's not for everybody but 
you know, when people see the leather jackets on the Avengers, they're like, oh man, that was that was a crap years of the Avengers. And there's a lot of purists out there that enjoy the classic Avengers era. And I also love that era. But this era is not to just be overlooked. This is a good story. There are some really good stories in here driven by characters. You know, the plot itself is actually pretty interesting. Yes, we've seen interdimensional beings come and take try to take over our world. We've had doppelgangers in the past. And, and But it's not about that. It's more about the characters that keep you reading and turning those pages to find out. All the drama I talked about, I just talked about really the, the, the trinity of the book, which is Cersei, Crystal, and the Black Knight. However, there's everybody else. Hercules is trying to find out uh, who this one girl he's crushing on is. Uh, Black Widow is going through her own thing. The Vision, like I mentioned, is having an identity crisis. Eric Masterson's trying to take over the role of Thor, even though he doesn't see himself as Thor. I mean, there's a lot of good stories in here that I don't want anybody to miss out on. So when you think of maybe passing up on this one, you know, take a look at the artwork. It may or may not be for you. And, and, don't pass up on it just because it's 90s. I mean, there are some good hidden gems in the 90s. And this is this one's one of my favorite reads. There is a lot. Damn, there is a lot of extras back here. So the Avengers chart. I hope they keep the original picture for that uh, issue 366. That's the variant cover in case you get the direct market cover only. Uh, let's see. Maybe it's in the... I'm not going to flip through all the extras. You can be surprised. Okay, so we have some Marvel Age posters back here. Yeah, yes. So this is the cover that they use uh, for 366. Look at that old school Joe Mad artwork, right? Can you imagine this guy? That looks nothing like his style. Kevin Conrad. Kevin Conrad's an amazing inker, too. That's Joe Quesada. Is that Mark Pacella? Yep, Mark Pacella. The trading cards. The Avengers X Band magazine stuff yeah I, re I remember i remember my comic book store selling out of this thing and i was like man now i gotta find that somewhere whoa what's up there wasp okay i see you steve epting drawing cersei right there i always loved his take on her these are the covers that they had the the foil the gold foil the silver foil i think that's what it's called that type of yeah i was right it is blood wraith man that old Brain Ticker still works up there. The introduction to Blood Ties, the many different uh, epic collections and trade paperbacks that some of the stories are in here. And then Black Knight number two variant cover. Okay, that's cool. It's a Marvel Knight. Oh, because he's wearing the leather jacket. Let's take a look at this binding for this big book. 1152 pages, retails for $125. Here is what the eye looks like. I think we got a bigger eye out of the that handbook omnibus, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see how it affects here. I'm sure some of you all have noticed when I was looking through some spreads. So we're back to the very beginning. And, you know, honestly, for a book this big, that actually makes sense. Here we go. We have some spread pages here. So there is a bit of artwork lost here because of that curve. And, and if you want to see all of it, you have to hold it down. But something to keep in mind. Let's look in the middle, how it affects it. Hey, that's not the middle at all, but there's a little bit of artwork lost in here. Not very much. Towards the middle, it gets um, a lot better. Here we go. Here spreads right around the middle. So very, very minimal gutter loss there. And then let's look in the back. Can't really show some of the pictures in this issue because it'll spoil something. But... Here we have the cover to issue 375. That's a two-page spread. So, as I mentioned, here's a little bit of a gutter curve. So, there, you're going to get a little bit of artwork loss in there. But, honestly, for a book this big, that actually isn't that bad. Uh, but that, as they say, is that. Now, when this book comes out, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. 
stores. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the page count, the build, and more importantly, the content that is in this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you had no idea what it was, if you were wondering where it fits into the Avengers reading order, which reminds me, I do need to put up that poll sometime this summer. Put it up between Avengers and maybe another team book. And that is all found on our Patreon, of course. And yes, let me know in those comments down below. I'd love to know who's picking it up, who's passing up on it, who was not a fan of the leather. How could you not be a fan of the leather jacket years, man? That's where it was at. Anyway, I, I, I know it's not for everybody, but you do have wonderful Steve Epting artwork. You have that Jimmy Chung issue, Bob Harris writing all this dramatic stuff so anyway i would love to know all those comments down below don't forget to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet we put out videos every day more importantly please everybody stay healthy stay safe and much love to all of you